What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button and hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And I hope you guys are freaking excited because today is Wednesday, which means we are jumping into some Marvel comics. Kicking it off, we have the Immortal Hulk versus the Mighty Thor. This is Banner of War Part 1 Alpha. If you're trying to get caught up on everything that has been going on with Hulk and Starship Hulk, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything that has been happening with Bruce Banner. This earth-shattering issue is brought to you by Donny Cates. The artist is Martin Kokolo and the color artist is Matt Wilson. And while this isn't the first time that Hulk and Thor have fought one another, they are promising this to be the biggest fight yet. So be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, this is the big event and we are diving straight into this. It is starting us off with Uatu the Watcher. We all know who he is, we all know what his job is. It is to observe, to watch everything transpire and catalog this. He knows what is about to go down and he is preparing himself for this main event. But before we see these two titans clash together, the Watcher wants to fill us in on what is happening. What has brought these two unstoppable forces against one another? While we haven't been covering Thor on this channel, the Watcher really does give us a quick recap on everything that he has been dealing with. After the War of the Realms, we have Thor who is now King of Asgard. And in the short time that he has been ruling, he has found himself against some very big odds. One event after another, from Galactus to the Black Winter, the emergence of Golden Shadow. And probably one of the hardest things for him was the death of Odin. A battle that came at the cost of his father and a shattered Mjolnir. While Odin's body may be dead, his soul is stuck inside of Mjolnir. Pieced back together, looking much like the Thor Love and Thunder hammer that we're going to see here soon in the movies. Being trapped inside of this hammer, he is able to talk to Thor. And while this may seem like a blessing, this is also a curse. With all of this craziness going on in his life, Thor is ready to just lay the smackdown on somebody. Let out all of this aggression. And that's where we get the recap of what has been going on with Bruce Banner. Because Bruce Banner, he created what he calls Starship Hulk. The psyche of the Hulk is locked inside the engine room. This is all inside the mind of the Hulk. And sitting in the control room in the mind of the Hulk, we have Bruce Banner. This is his way of having absolute control. They referred to this as a mind palace. And deep in that engine room, we have the Hulk who faces a wide variety of adversaries. From Marvel zombies to the gods themselves. The harder the Hulk psyche fights against all of these adversaries, the harder on the outside the Hulk's body is able to endure and lay down punishment. Finding himself on another world on another earth, we saw how truly capable this Starship Hulk can be. But we also saw Titan. Now Titan is essentially Hulk's Hulk. It's Hulk's manifestation. When the Hulk gets angry, there is Titan. Much like when Bruce Banner gets angry, there is the Hulk. Again, this is something that has already been done in the past, but they're really revamping it and bringing it to this new era. With the Hulk finding himself in the space between worlds, this is where Thor has finally caught up to him. And this is where the clashing of gods begins. As these two giants clash together, we see that Thor is trying to reason with him, trying to reach out to Bruce Banner, hoping that this doesn't have to resort to this level of violence. As the two of them tussle, they find themselves landing on a world known as Sakreen, and the Hulk is letting Thor know that this is Bruce Banner. He can hear him perfectly fine, and he is telling him to go away. What we also see is that Mjolnir, Odin, is talking to Thor, while inside Inside the mind of Starship Hulk, we have Betty, aka the persona the Titan is taking on, talking to Bruce and letting him know that this is a fight they might not be able to win. 
because how many times have they done this and how many times has Thor won this fight? And the two of them having these voices speak to them, we see this play out in real time. Both of them are telling these voices to shut up. And it throws both of them off guard, asking each other who you're talking to. But we never get an answer because we see them collide yet again. Thor not wanting any of the locals on this planet to end up dead because of their fight. We see the two of them transported and Sif is able to send them to the Black Hand of God. This is the arena of all arenas. Built from the very severed hand of a celestial, this is where the greatest and most gruesome tournaments are held. This is a place where you find eternal glory. Sitting in the crowd, we have the Watcher anticipating and waiting for this battle. As the attendees begin to place their bets, this is where we have round one of Hulk vs. Thor. As Thor takes his hammer and he smashes it across the face of the Hulk, he is letting the Hulk know that there were 17 people. In El Paso, he killed 17 innocent lives. And now it is time to face his punishment. It is time to face justice. As Thor is just mopping the floor with him, we see Mjolnir put on the back of the Hulk, unable to move, stuck right where he is. Before Thor goes to finish the Hulk off, he lets him know that he was really hoping it would never come down to this. In the back of his mind, he always had a feeling that this is where their paths were going to lead them. Eventually, he was going to have to stop the monster. He knew in time that Bruce Banner, the Hulk, would have to be put down. Letting Banner know that there is no joy, there is no happiness in this victory. But it is time to finally put this beast to sleep. As the Hulk is struggling to try and get to his feet, it does him no good. And while Banner wants to explain this whole situation, because the truth is, it was Titan who is responsible for El Paso. Or at least that is what we are assuming up to this point. It hasn't gave us an exact detailed timeline of what happened in El Paso. But it's fair to assume with the manifestation of Titan that it was very much that persona who was responsible for what happened. With Bruce Banner recognizing that Thor is not going to listen to him. This is where we increase power to level 8. The computer trying to warn him that even at level 8, they cannot move because Mjolnir is on top of them. As he takes over complete and absolute control, he is working like an avatar and now is working the arms, legs, every single movement on his own. Before, this was all really computer controlled, but Bruce Banner now has a trick up his sleeve. Hooking into the system, the computer uploads every single fight that him and Thor have ever had. This means he remembers every move that Thor has done. Every attack, every parry, everything. He remembers every single punch, every blow to the face. Having this kind of access, this makes him know every single move that Thor might throw at him. At least from a pattern of history, this is the Hulk fighting smarter for the first time. With all of these memories being uploaded into his mind, we see the Hulk's body begin to rise up. Thor staring in disbelief. But the Hulk isn't moving Mjolnir. What the Hulk is doing is lifting his body up while Mjolnir is pulling out the entire chest of the Hulk, rising up to his feet with a giant hole right in the middle of him. He tells Thor to pick up his hammer and let's finish this. And now it is the Hulk's turn to do some smashing as Thor is having his face smashed into the ground. This is where we see Mjolnir fly up into the air. Odin believing that he needs to take control of this situation before Thor finds himself dead on this ground. There is a rumbling, a thunder in the sky. At first, Hulk is not sure what to think of this, believing maybe that this is some lightning, some parlor tricks that Thor thinks might have the upper hand against Hulk. Of course, Bruce Banner is not scared of a little bit of lightning. What he doesn't recognize is that thunderous boom that was Mjolnir breaking the sound barrier. In a matter of seconds, we see the hammer come down with the fury of the gods. That thunderous blow. This gives Thor the upper hand. Wielding his hammer, 
he is smashing away on the Hulk. In the midst of this fight, this is where Odin lets it be known that there is something going on with Bruce Banner. Both Odin and Thor have sensed this. It is almost as if something is possessing him. Odin recognizes it as Bruce Banner truly being haunted. Giving Thor an idea, we see Mjolnir fly through the air. As this hammer comes smashing down on the Hulk's face, we see Bruce Banner in the control room, everything goes sideways, flying out of his captain seat, only to look up and see Odin himself. Alright gang, so our story starts us off at Avengers Mountain. They now have the location of where the Hulk is. In the arena that is referred to as the Black Hand of God, with Iron Man debriefing everybody on the situation, Reed Richards has to ask the question, how did you figure this out? How were you able to find him in the vastness of space? And what Tony does is he really plays with him. He starts to mess with him, telling him that he has satellites scanning all over space and he was able to hear Hulk smash throughout the, the vastness of all space. That one of his satellites had been destroyed right beforehand it picked up those words. And Reed Richards is legitimately impressed in Tony Stark, not even believing that he had the capability of doing something so vast. The truth is he doesn't. Thor's ravens had come to let them know exactly what is going on. There was no satellite, there was no scream saying Hulk smash that reverberated through space and time. It was simply the ravens sending a message. Now of course Captain America, he is ready to find some kind of diplomacy. Try to find a way to reason and bring Bruce Banner back, wanting everybody to just hold their ground while Thor is taking him on. Iron Man, he has another idea. He is gonna go fight the Hulk. And while Captain America is very much opposed to this idea, Tony Stark doesn't care in the slightest. In fact, Tony Stark is not even at this meeting. This is one of his Iron Man suits that is being remote piloted, letting Steve know that he has never, ever actually physically been at one of these meetings, that it has always been one of his remote suits. Not wanting to argue with Captain America any longer, Iron Man initiates his flight sequence and we see one of his Hulkbuster suits flying up to the stars. And that's what takes us to Starship Hulk. Inside the mind of Hulk, this is where we find Odin and Bruce Banner. And when Odin first gets in here, he definitely lays down some heavy punches on Bruce Banner. The truth is though, this place, this existence, this Starship Hulk that they are inside of, this is all under the control of Bruce Banner. So no matter who Odin may be, this is a place where Banner has the upper hand. Because inside this mind inside Starship Hulk. Banner is God. Having the computer run an auto defense system. This is so the body of Hulk will be fighting Thor on the outside while Bruce Banner can really figure out what he is going to do with Odin. But before this conversation can truly get underway, we see that Odin is able to break free. And in doing so, he starts just mopping the floor with Bruce Banner. Not giving Bruce any any kind of time to think, to move, to even operate. Not even sure how Odin is even capable of doing this. And so while Odin is just whooping the heck out of Bruce Banner on the outside, we have Hulk and Thor, the two of them clashing together. We see them headbutt one another. And with this headbutt, we have Odin and Bruce transported to a memory he never wanted to visit again. That dreadful night in El Paso where 17 lives had been lost. This is where we finally learn the truth. We finally know what happens in El Paso. Now, Bruce Banner had found himself here because there was some word, some reports, that there had been some killings on the border here in Texas. And so as Bruce Banner sits down at this bar, he pulls out his computer. Someone knocks over a beer. This beer spills all over his laptop, and that's when he could feel it. Hulk's rage was boiling on the inside, just dying to get out. Something different happens though. That rage, it spreads. We see everybody in this bar, they start to turn green. 
almost like that anger was a cantogen, spreading like a disease from one person to the next. This rage consumed all of them, but for Bruce, that wasn't the worst of it. Because when everybody else had this rage take them over, something took over Bruce Banner as well. When he opens his eyes, the only thing he sees is blackness. Helpless, having no control over his own body, unable to stop what is about to happen, we see Bruce Banner start ripping people apart. This bar becomes an absolute bloodbath. Something took control of Bruce Banner. Something ripped limbs off of people, biting them, tearing their hearts out. And Banner could do nothing but watch. And just like that, it was all over. Dead bodies filling this room. The flames growing on the walls. This is the moment that Bruce Banner decided they needed to get away. Whatever was inside of him, whatever monster is creeping up to the surface, he knew he had to get it away from everybody. The damage that could be done if Bruce Banner didn't have control anymore. If Bruce Banner went on a killing spree, he knows the death devastation that could happen. And so until they figure out what the heck is inside of them, they made a run for it. But before Odin can get any more information, Thor takes Mjolnir and throws it, bringing Odin back into the hammer. Obviously, Odin was not happy about this because he was about to make a breakthrough. He was about to figure out how Starship Hulk had been created to begin with. But moreover, he's learning that Bruce Banner wasn't intentionally going out here murdering people. The truth of the matter, there is a monster inside of him. That monster is not the Hulk. More than like Likely, this was the result of Titan, with Thor letting Odin know that they no longer have time, and that is because the Calvary has arrived. Bruce Banner's psyche still trapped inside Starship Hulk. He has no control over anything going on. The individual that does take control is the Hulk psyche, locked inside the engine room, going against one disaster and catastrophe after another, from Marvel zombies to Celestia. Celestials. Bruce Banner has been throwing simulation after simulation at the Hulk psyche, but now the Hulk psyche has control. He has no idea that he is not in a simulation, so he is going to go 100%. He will rip apart anything and anyone that stands before him, and that's where Player 3 enters the game. From the sky, this is where we see Tony Stark and his magnificent Hulkbuster. Alright gang, we are jumping right into the freaking fight. With Bruce Banner's psyche trapped inside of the Hulk, the Hulk psyche has taken control of his body yet again. But this time, he believes that this is a simulation. He doesn't realize he's no longer in the engine room, which means the Hulk, whenever he sees in front of him, he believes that this is a creation of Banner. He has been breaking his way through every single wave that has come at him. If there were ever to be a level 10, this is it. This is the engine room getting cranked all the way up. Hulk is not holding back in the slightest bit. We're gonna see what he is truly capable of, with Iron Man raining down everything that he has. Most people at this point, they have already fled the Black Hand of God. The only people left standing in this arena is Iron Man, Thor, and Hulk. As Thor observes from a little bit of a distance, we see Iron Man throwing everything thing that he has. This Hulkbuster armor, this is supposed to be draining him of his gamma radiation. With the Hulk still standing, Iron Man's trying to figure out what the heck is going on. As Boss lets him know that his gamma radiation, it is not depleting. In fact, it is increasing. As the gamma and rage build up inside the Hulk's body, his eyes begin to go black. We know what that means. We know that that is Titan. Being on the brink of transformation, we see the Celestial Hulkbuster knocked clean out of the sky. With his suit severely damaged, trying to figure out what the heck just happened. This is where Thor jumps back into the fight. 
and he is letting Tony know that he needs to stay exactly where he is. Now, Tony, he's trying to figure out why Thor just took a giant chunk out of his suit, letting it be known that that wasn't of his doing, not getting into the details of Mjolnir and Odin being inside of it, just saying that the hammer has a mind of its own, something that Tony is very familiar with because they just dealt with a situation like this. Trying to get to the point, trying to let Tony know that there is something wrong with the Hulk. But he lets Tony know that after everything that they have been through throughout the years, every battle, every confrontation, even when they battled with the Hulk before in the past, they have never faced anything like this. Thor believes that they might have to finally put down Banner for good. Not paying attention, this is where we see the Hulk come in and he puts Thor down into the ground. With Bruce Banner completely helpless, just watching, screaming at the top of his lungs, trying to let them know that he doesn't know this is a simulation. Trying to let them know that they need to run. There is nothing to hold him back. If he believes this is a simulation, he will use every bit of his strength. There will be nothing that holds him back. With round two breaking out, Iron Man shoots everything he has at the Hulk. We see Mjolnir go flying off of Thor's hand. Odin firmly believing that he can reach Bruce Banner. That he can save all of their trouble. If he was just given the opportunity. As the hammer comes flying in, Hulk looks over his shoulder. Believing that maybe, just maybe, Hulk is worthy. Reaching out to wield Mjolnir himself. That doesn't happen. The hammer smashes the Hulk down to the ground. Mjolnir on top of him. Odin letting it be known that he is here to help. Trying to get into his mind and find the psyche of Bruce Banner. As the Hulk's rage begins to build, we see freaking gamma laser beams coming out of his eyes, ripping a hole into the Celestial Hulkbuster suit. All of his rage, it is pouring out of Hulk. It is burning the very ground that stands around him. No one has ever seen Hulk go to this level. With enough gamma radiation to take down an entire skyline, Tony trying to let Thor know that they gotta go. Odin refusing to leave, staying on top of Hulk, trying to reach Banner. Hulk just wanting his freedom. Right before Thor is able to grab Mjolnir, we see a giant blinding light of gamma radiation. An explosion so vast, so ginormous, it can be seen from planets away completely vaporizing everything here. If it hadn't been for the Celestial Hulkbuster suit, Tony Stark would be dead because what just happened was a gamma radiation bomb. Hulk exploded with radiation, approximately the force of 3,000 gamma bombs. An explosion of this magnitude for any ordinary mortal, this exposure to gamma radiation would incinerate them at the atomic level. But the thing about that is, there were no humans around. So while no one was essentially vaporized, there was a god that was standing directly in the front of this blast. And while a mortal may have been taken down to the very atom, a god on the other hand, now he's gonna turn into a Hulk. A new player coming into the battlefield. We have Thor, who has been turned into the giant green man. Alright gang, so that was a little bit of a lengthy intro, but we are jumping right into this. With Thor now transformed into a Hulk, he goes directly for the Celestial Hulkbuster. Tony Stark using this thing on autopilot with whatever energy it has left. But once Thor gets a hold of it, he rips this thing to pieces. As he goes in to make his attack on Tony Stark himself, this is where we see the Hulk come in and knock Thor for a loop. This isn't Bruce Banner. This is the Hulk having control over himself yet again, now recognizing that this is not simulation, telling Tony that he needs to run. Thor comes crashing in, and he starts Thor smashing all over the Hulk. Hulk appearing to be unconscious on the ground, and Thor just smashing him further in. This is where Odin gets his opportunity to get back inside the mind of Bruce Banner. As Thor comes down with a thunderous punch, 
Odin dives in and he finds Bruce, letting him know that out there on the surface, Thor is killing you. To save Thor, to save Bruce, Odin is willing to give his help in whatever Bruce Banner needs to save the day. To stop Thor before he does something he will regret. To turn him back into the son that he knows. To finally bring this all to an end. While they devise a plan, out on the surface, we have Tony Stark keeping eyes on everything, trying to get any communication with the Avengers, letting them know that Thor has been compromised. Meanwhile, Hulk has gotten back up to his feet, and him and Thor are just throwing blows. Neither of them truly getting the edge over one another. They're just smashing each other's faces in. Tony Stark about to get smashed in the midst of all of this. This is where rainbows surround him, and he is teleported out of here. When he made his call out, Sif was able to hear him, using the Bifrost to bring him here. Now recognizing what is going on with Thor, she knows exactly what he has become. She also knows that he needs to be stopped. She will use the Sword of Asgard to do so, as she goes to summon him to her location. What we see is Thor grounding himself, not allowing himself to be teleported. Sif not being able to hold on long enough. Thor is able to break free of this hold, and in doing so, that rainbow bridge, it goes tumbling down. Something that should be impossible. Thor has just shattered the Bifrost. Odin believing at this point that Thor is gone, that he is no more. If he would do something of this nature, how could they possibly save him? But Bruce does have a plan. Bruce explains to Odin that this is not Thor. That new thing inside of him, known as Titan, it can possess people surrounding them, turning them into killing machines. But Bruce also doesn't believe going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Titan will do any good. He does have a plan, and he is going to need a favor from Odin. Thor looking over his shoulder to see Mjolnir flying through the air, calling his hammer to him. It hits him in the arm and it goes flying past him. Bruce Banner now back in control of the Hulk body. With the help of Odin, he is now wielding Mjolnir. We see Thor become Hulk and the Hulk becomes Thor. Our Thor Hulk being very upset that his hammer was stolen. These two colossal giants, they collide together, hammer meeting fist, and this whole place detonates. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number 8 of Hulk, it all comes down to this. As we have the Watcher observing the Colossal Titans take blows at one another. He observes, he watches, wondering if the question that has been asked for decades may finally get an answer. Should the universe not be destroyed on this day? The question that may still linger for centuries to come. Who would win in a battle to the death? Thor, the God of Thunder, the Allfather, or Hulk, the World Breaker. As these two giants are just absolutely destroying everything around them and laying down some heavy blows, Odin lets Banner know that they need to get to Asgard. Not really sure how they are going to do that with the Rainbow Bridge being broken. Odin lets him know that he didn't let him wield Mjolnir just so that he could knock around Thor telling him that Thor has always held back a little bit of Mjolnir's power. He has never used it to its fullest extent. Today, Thor is not wielding it. Odin is not his son. Using the power within the hammer, they open up a portal, and this brings them to Asgard. Waiting for them, we have Beta Ray Bill and Sif. Beta Ray Bill holding the forces back, not really understanding everything that is going on. As Sif helps Tony Stark up to his feet, Tony starts to try to figure out what is really going on. The truth is, Hulk wielding Mjolnir, he believes that he should be able to destroy Thor, even if he is gamma radiated, because in their past fights, Thor has always just barely been able to hold his own. He has barely beaten him in the past. This is where Beta Ray Bill interjects, telling him that Hulk has never fought Thor, not the real Thor. 
The truth is, in the past when Hulk had gone against Thor, he was facing Thor the Avenger, the humble and noble warrior. But there was a reason that Thor had been cast down to Midgard, to learn humility, to learn honor to be able to wield this massive amount of power with mercy. And so Hulk is not facing just a mirror of his own rage. He is facing the rage of Thor that has been held back for hundreds of years. A power that this world has never seen. In the past when Thor and Hulk had gone against one another, he believed truly in his heart that somewhere inside of Hulk there was a man, an ally, a warrior worthy of forgiveness. But having Thor truly unleashed, the only thing he can see is an enemy. Hulk will finally see what it means to fight a god. In the midst of this fight, we have Thor ripping Hulk's arm clean the freak off. Odin realizes that Hulk is probably not going to hold up for much longer. Even wielding Mjolnir, he is severely outmatched in this fight. Using the hammer, he tries knocking Thor towards the world tree. Being lucky, getting a couple of good swings in, he knocks him towards the tree and the world tree grabs hold of him. Right now, they are trying to use everything at their disposal to rid him of this madness. Odin had hoped, throwing him into the world tree that all of their united power of every realm known and unknown in the universe to cage his madness all of the voices of the elders whispering to him guiding him back to the god that we know all of the magic and enchantments known to the runes and fates all of this and odin isn't sure if they are going to be able to help out thor as Thor rips apart everything that is holding him in place, all of the roots, all of the vines, all of this power could not hold him back. And he turns to the world tree, grabbing hold of it. We see Hulk Thor lift it out of the freaking ground. And if they don't stop him, we are talking about the end of all reality. They have to find a way to calm him down. They have been punching the crap out of him, and none of it has worked. This is where Bruce Banner, he decides, why not let's try and talk to him. If he can hear the voice of his father, maybe you can reach him. You can reach that god that we know is inside there and so taking control of hulk he speaks to him and he apologizes for all of his troubles for everything that he has done for how hard he has always been on him tells him that he failed to show him kindness probably in moments that he would need it most that he has made so many mistakes but despite all of his failures despite all of their differences he tells him that he still loves him and if he would be willing if he would allow odin to do what all fathers have to do from time to time and that is care the burden tapping Thor on the head with Mjolnir we see a giant explosion of energy of magic flame and rock going in all directions and as the smoke begins to clear we see Thor turn back into his regular self wielding his hammer once more the god of thunder has returned we see hulk his arm now regenerated the robotic monstrosity that bruce banner had turned it into it all returns we see him revert back to starship hulk the two of them look at one another and hulk leaves Thor was the only one to see him go, to the outside world, to everybody else. Thor has let them know that Hulk is dead. With Tony Stark returning back home, Sif is letting Thor know that Bruce Banner, the Hulk, he is long gone. So far gone that she cannot even see him. Not really sure if it was the best idea to let Thor go. Thor has learned the truth. The Hulk was not responsible for what happened in El Paso. Regardless of that,
that, this world will not ever let him live it down. And Banner knows this. He has lived behind the eyes of Bruce Banner. He has felt all of his anger, all of his rage, and pain. These are things that he shares with him more than he would ever like to admit. And so the only thing he can wish is that out there among the stars, the Hulk might find some healing. He might find any kind of peace. As the Hulk traverses through space and time, back in the Asgard Vault, in Odin's Vault, we see the armor come to life. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Definitely not a bad issue, not a bad way to end it. At the end of the day, the only thing that was truly able to stop Thor was a father's love. I know some people, they're probably not going to be happy with that conclusion, but I don't think it's a bad way to go. Odin has made so many mistakes, so many failures, you know, and that's just the path of being a father. That is going to inevitably happen regardless of what you do. This issue was a great display of how powerful Mjolnir is. You know, Odin even saying Thor never uses this thing to its fullest potential. He holds back not only his own godly power, but the power of Mjolnir, something that Odin would never do. I do enjoy that Thor let him go away and let everybody know that he that, that Hulk is dead. The truth is, if the Avengers believed that Hulk was still alive, the Fantastic Four believing he's still alive, they would probably go chasing after him no matter where he goes. But Thor Thor understands him. He understands his rage, he understands his pain, and he knows that he is innocent in what has happened. Hoping that he can go out there throughout all of space and time and find some kind of peace. I think the biggest takeaway is that we might have an answer to that question. Who wins in a fight in an all-out death match? The answer, it's Thor. Thor wins that fight because Thor has always held back. Even without his freaking hammer, he was tearing the Hulk apart. And the Hulk was wielding Mjolnir. Now, obviously, they left room for debate. They left room for people to discuss this and, and counter it. But I am going to go out on that limb. I'm going out on the edge. And I'm saying, I believe that Thor can beat Hulk. If it is an all-out fight to the death, after what we were just shown, how could I think any differently? But with this story arc coming to its close, Thor is going to be branching off and we are going to see Venom in his new issues. When it comes to Hulk, he is headed off into God knows where, but they do give us a hint. The new epic, the new story, titled Hulk Planet. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything that happened with Banner of War, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll take you to a playlist that will get you completely caught up on everything that happened with this event. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. With that being said, until the next breakdown.